Good morning guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we build business, create community, find freedom, and share success. It's Saturday morning, which means it's time for another edition of the Weekend Workshop. And this week, we are going to talk about powering your house with a generator through backfeeding. Now this is the finished product. I'm not going to hold the entire thing up while I talk to you, but it looks rather dangerous. But if you follow the proper safety procedures, it can be done very easily and very safely. I'm going to talk about all that at the end. I'm filming this video in reverse. I'm actually filming this intro about two weeks after I filmed all the rest of the video. So you'll get to see a little bit about how I put this together, the things that I have learned. Now I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just showing you what I have done because people are going to backfeed whether we talk about it or not. So we might as well get ahead of the curve and say this is what we can do safely. So I'm going to show you what I've learned, what I've learned from other experts, and I'm going to tell you all about the safe procedure for backfeeding properly so that you don't hurt yourself and more importantly, you don't hurt a lineman. All right, guys, real quick before we dive in, anything you want to know about me, toolmantim.co. That's toolmantim.co. And you can go there. You can find my social media links, add me across all the different platforms, check out the monthly newsletter, the weekly podcast, and most importantly, check out the shop section where there is over 100 Amazon products that I have links to, all the products that meet the Toolman Tim seal of approval, stuff I've used in my handyman business that makes me money or saves me money. So drop by there, check that out. we got a full range of categories, household, painting goods, uh, hand, uh, hand tools, cordless gear, and of course preparedness items. So go by there if you're looking for a solution to a problem that you have and you might just find it. All right, guys. So like I said, this week I want to talk about backfeed cables for your generator. And there's a lot of misinformation out there and I'm not going to tell you all I'm this is just for informational purposes only I don't want to be that guy but I do want to show you the backfeed cable that I'm building I want to tell you the parts that I bought the gauge that I'm using which is probably overkill but I want everything to be safe and I thought I would share with you guys it doesn't mean do what I do but I thought I would at least show you what it is that I'm doing so before we go too far what exactly is backfeeding? And well, that is you're using your generator to feed your house so that you have power when the power's out. Now, the absolute biggest concern about backfeeding is that you have to 110% without anything, you have to make sure that your main breaker at the very top of your panel is turned off. If you don't know what a main breaker is, turn this video off right now and leave because that is important. I have an interlock switch coming. That is what makes backfeeding uh, legal and safe in most jurisdictions. But if you're not sure, look it up. If you're not comfortable with electrical work, don't do this. Don't watch the video. But basically what an interlock switch is, is something that the only way you can turn on your 50 amp breaker to feed your house with your generator is if this little mechanical metal plate goes across so that your main switch has to be off. It's the only way because, and I need to stress this, when you're back feeding, if you don't turn off your main switch, you can kill someone. Basically what happens is you've got an open feed out to the grid. You're feeding your electricity into your house. It can go up, out the power line, down the main lines and get stepped up through transformers until it finds linesmen out there trying to fix the power lines and then he's going to have a bad day. So you absolutely, when you are feeding your house with a generator, you have to make sure that your main breaker is off. So now that we got that out of the way, what exactly is a back feeding cable? So with my generator, and they're all going to be different, you need to check yours. Mine has a 220 um, outlet that is rated for 50 amps. So you need to have a cable that is rated for 50 amps. And what that cable needs to have on it, here is my number. What do we got here? I want to show you this. That's my number 63. It's 25 feet long. That is the 50 amp cable that I need with the mail plug on one end. I ordered this on Amazon. And what you get is a mail plug on one side and a bare wire connection on the other side. That's the only way you can order those. And then you need to order another 50 amp mail plug on the other end. And you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, if you've got two bare uh, plugs on either end, 
again, that is going to be dangerous. There is a process for following this. Now, there's lots of good videos out there on how to properly backfeed, but the two things you need is either you or an electrician, depending on what your area requires, you need to put in an interlock switch. And that's the switch that turns off your main and then turns allows you to turn on your 50 or whatever your uh, backfeed uh, outlet allows. And then the other thing is you need to have an electrician or someone put in a 50 amp outlet or whatever amperage outlet you need to backfeed on the exterior of your house. So now you're set up. You have a, an outlet on the outside that you can plug your generator into. And now we need to make a backfeed cable. So if you've ever replaced uh, an end on an extension cord, this is exactly like that, just on a larger scale. These wires are a little difficult to work with, but you're just going to strip them down like normal, take apart the male end of the plug, and then make your connections. Red and black on either side, ground at the top, and white neutral at the bottom. Put it all back together, hold your tongue just right, tuck it all into place, put your screws back together, and now you have a male plug on both ends of this 6325 gauge the 25 foot extension cord. So I hope that helps guys. Okay, so now that you have your completed back feed cable together, there's a process that you need to follow to plug this in safely so that you don't have a bad day. We're talking about uh, 220 volts here, the type of electricity that can easily kill you. So if you're not comfortable with this or it's something that you don't like doing, then just turn this off, like I said. I think that's like disclaimer number four in this video. So I just want to let you know that this is just the information that I've put together that I know. So from there, what you need to do is you're going to have, you have your main outlet, your main power turned off in the house. You still have your 50 amp breaker turned off in the house. That's the one that's going to be feeding through the RV outlet on the outside of your house. So then you're going to take your plug and you're going to plug it into the wall of the house. Then you're going to come back and your generator's off at this point then you're going to plug the other male end into your generator. That way you're never having a chance of touching these plugs when they're energized. Okay, so now you've got your breaker off at the house, you've got your plug plugged into your house, plug plugged into your generator, make sure the breaker's off in the generator, start your generator. Then once it's on, you can turn that breaker on the generator. That way you never have your hands anywhere you shouldn't have your hands. Then you can go inside, have all your breakers turned off, turn that 150 amp breaker on that feeds your panel, and then slowly turn the rest of your breakers on that you're gonna use. That's the entire process, it's simple. If you're not careful, you're gonna hurt yourself. So like I said, the things you need to look at when building a backfeed cable, make sure you have the right gauge for what I am putting through. I've got 50 amps, I'm running it, I wanted at least 20 feet away from the house, so I bought a 25 foot cable. I bought 6.3 wire, that's what you need. Some people might say you could probably do away with uh, do with 8.3, but for my instance, I wanted 6.3. I made sure I got the right outlets right here for both. The both male ends are the exact same. Then you wanna make sure you have your outlet on the outside of the house. That's all you need. And then of course you follow the process where nothing's turned on, the main breaker is off, your 50 amp breaker, your feeding breaker is off as well in the house. Then you're gonna plug one male into the outside of the house, one male in into the generator, then you're gonna start your generator. That way you know if you are back feeding, you're doing it as safely as possible. Number one, you're protecting the lineman, and number two, you're protecting yourself. And those are the two things. And then of course, there are people who do this without those uh, interlink or uh, you know the lockout uh, switch devices. If you're gonna do that, I don't condone it, I don't say it. I've in the past tried it and done it for a test. You could even run it through, say, a 50 amp uh, electric range outlet, and that's totally fine. But I just wanted to tell you and show you what I bought to make a back feed cable and how to do it safely. Because if you're gonna do it anyway, I might as well be on here and share with you what I've learned. And one other cool thing that I really like are these new uh, 220 volt plugs that have these pull-offs here. Not that you're ever gonna be dealing with these plugs when they're energized, but 220 plugs with those to keep your fingers away from any of the prongs is an excellent idea, even at the best of times. So I hope this video was informative to you guys. I hope you liked seeing me put together this backfeed cable. I thought it'd be kind of a fun little project, something I wanted to do, so why not record it and share it with you? Now, 
If I got anything wrong in this video at all, I'm sure someone's going to let me know, and I would appreciate it if you did. If there's anything you want me to do a follow-up video on, maybe a little more on this process, I don't know how much I want to put out there and show because I don't ever want to be liable for someone doing something they shouldn't do. But at least I could show you how to make a backfeed cable properly, and that's about all I wanted to show you, and how to be safe. Because guys, it's all good and well to have everything on hand for a backup power emergency, but if we're not doing it safe, you're better off not having any of the damn stuff to begin with. If you've got a generator, but you don't know how to use it and you know you, there's so many things can go wrong fire um, you know gases and of course burning your house down or electrocuting yourself any of that so if you can't do this safely research read watch until you're comfortable with it or hire a professional that can do it so i hope that helps guys that's it for me this week if you want to see more of these videos just put it in the comments below let me know what you'd like to learn from me because i'm learning as i go and i'm sharing with you what i know so thanks guys and if you're new five videos a week hit the subscribe button hang around introduce yourself in the comments let us know who you are and thanks for hanging out with me in the workshop this week guys as always stay happy stay healthy and have a great week